Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game Tidicom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing Intel's Computex press conference. There were several surprising announcements from Intel during the conference, and we're going to be detailing all of them. But we're going to start things out with the i9-9900KS. Now, the specifications of this chip are essentially the same as the i9-9900K, but with one major difference, and that is that the clock frequencies of this CPU are higher. It boosts 5 gigahertz across all processor cores. So whether you've got one CPU core under load, or whether you have all 8 and 16 threads under load, the CPU will be running at 5 gigahertz, which will be really great for those who are chasing the clock frequencies for minimum frame rates and that type of thing. This is clearly one way Intel are trying to take away some of the thunder for the Ryzen 3000 series. It's going to be very curious how uh, the Ryzen 3000 series faces off against uh, Intel's current CPU lineup. We'll have to wait, of course, until we actually get our hands on the Ryzen 3000 series to actually know just how well it does perform in games, obviously. Uh, AMD have said that there is a significant FPS increase with Ryzen 3000, but obviously those are non, uh, non-controlled non tests there within AMD's own labs. But either way, this CPU is pretty cool. Uh, it is also using binned cores, so because of that, it will be uh, unsurprising if you can actually squeeze higher clock frequencies out of it, particularly if you're willing to go for more extreme overclocking, like a really high-end AIO or even more extreme if you're uh, someone who's chasing world records in terms of clock frequencies with overclocking. I now want to detail a lot of information concerning Intel's Generation 11 graphics. So Gen 11 is integral to Intel's plans to move towards uh, the final discrete GPU. This is kind of like the halfway point. The uh, GPU that they are primarily focused on telling us about at the moment has 64 execution units, which you can essentially say is the same as about 512 shaders. Given the clock frequency is 1100 megahertz, this puts this GPU at over one teraflop in performance. That's actually really close to a base Xbox One. Intel has one goal here, and that is that the Ice Lake CPUs will be detailing the CPU portion of these new processors in just a moment uh, will be capable of playing esports titles at 1080p with reasonable uh, quality settings and so you don't need to worry about actually owning uh, or buying a laptop with a discrete GPU uh, as a separate uh, component soldered on board. This of course should also provide great battery life but for Intel it's much more than that. As I mentioned, they are, of course, looking to enter the discrete GPU market. So this is kind of like the springboard. It's the jumping off point. And Generation uh, 12, or if you prefer Intel XC, as it's going to be known in the lineup of graphics cards, is uh, due for launch next year. And it, of course, will be facing fierce competition from AMD. Most likely, they will have an improved version of Narve. The rumors have it that it's going to be the big Narve, or possibly even we'll see the next generation uh, GPU architecture from AMD. And they will also most likely be facing the onslaught of NVIDIA's 7NM powered uh, GeForce lineup, of course, with hearing that's going to be Ampere. I have done a much deeper dive on Generation 11 architecture uh, in one of my previous videos, so I'll link it in the description of this very video. But as a quick reminder, the Generation 11 graphics has 64 execution units clocked at 1.1 gigahertz. This means that you're getting about 1.12 teflops of powers, which is very impressive to be honest with you for such a low wattage part. As I said, we'll get more into watts and so on when we're talking about the broader Ice Lake ecosystem. Uh, so this means it's very close to the 1.3-ish teflops of the base Xbox One. This also means it's not that far away from uh, NVIDIA's more power-efficient GeForce cards, such as, let's say, the MX150 or the MX110. And as for performance then, well, 
uh, Intel are telling us that it could have up to 1.8 times the FPS compared to its older generation. It also supports, as you would imagine, Adaptive Sync, which is, well, something that they did announce quite early on that that was one of their plans. They also have provided several benchmarks, and CSGO uh, is around the 50-ish uh, frames per second mark with a 8th uh, generation UHD 620. But with the Iris Plus graphics, it's in the high 80s, you know, the mid to high 80s, which is much more, uh, much more playable, as you can imagine. And Rainbow Six Siege... Uh, does still not hit the 60 FPS mark by any stretch of the imagination, but it does maintain an average FPS of over 30. And honestly, Intel have also provided a, another set of Generation 9 comparisons as well in a different slide, and this compares games such as Rocket League, Dirt Rally, World of Tanks, 3D Mark as well. And yeah, uh, between... 1.5 times the performance or 1.4 in the worst case scenarios up to over two times the performance uh, against the generation 9 which is really nice it's a really nice jump in performance intel's 10 and m is also on track which is amazing news and we're going to be learning a lot more about the sunny cove architecture because honestly this is a rather large jump in performance now it is against skylake a couple of people have said, well, okay, Skylake, but who cares? We're on, like, the Coffee Lake refresh now. Like, there's been many generations of CPU since Skylake. But you have to remember that Skylake is the same architecture that is found in Coffee Lake, in Coffee Lake refresh. There are no real IPC gains that we've seen from Intel in around four years. Basically, it is very much the same architecture with slight differences here or there, depending on the... Uh, processor for example obviously with coffee lake you got six cores and then eight cores but the underlying architecture of the actual cpu core is basically identical so when they are saying 18 percent they are referring to the actual skylake architecture itself and that means you know the actual put the actual cpu cores so let's have a look at this so ice lake uh in a nutshell is advertised to offer thunderbolt 3 the fastest Wi-Fi 6 gig, ahead, 6 gig connection, uh, AI performance is up to 2.5 times the performance with Deep Learning Boost, uh, they are also pushing and touting its pro content creation prowess and also the ability to watch 4K 60 uh, hertz high dynamic range video with all of its colors intact because obviously that's quite important. But what about Ice Lake? Well, Ice Lake so far is running four cores, eight threads. This is obviously a mobile part. We'll go further into the power consumption in a moment. Uh, it is using high bandwidth, for low latency IP and core scalability memory controllers. This was something that Intel actually accidentally let slip um, uh, regarding its generation 11 slide that it can support memory frequencies of 3200 megahertz uh, with DDR4 up to 64 gigabytes of memory, but with low power memory, it's up to 3733 megahertz. Uh, once again, generation 11 graphics with just detailed all of that stuff. There's two media encoders there and also three dis uh, display pipelines. So there is a significant difference to the actual processor architecture itself. Uh, for one, uh, if we look under the microarchitecture slide, level one cache has seen a significant bump. So from 32 kilobytes to 48 kilobytes uh, per core, of course. Now level two cache has also been doubled in size. The level two translation look side buffer has also seen a significant increase with its entries. Uh, the IOPS cache as well drastically increased in-flight loads and stores have also seen a massive bump as well basically this cpu is considerably more impressive it's wider it has additional execution ports as well as that uh it's got much better branch prediction accuracy as well which is very critical when dealing with mobile parts because obviously if you need to keep us uh, going back to uh fetch 
a different instruction because you would oops wrong one then that's not a particularly great way for a process to function so for great branch predictions it means that generally speaking the throughput of the cpu is just much better and also requires a lot less power the sunny cove instructions per cycle has seen an improvement of up to 18 percent which is actually really good uh, and it's going to be very interesting to see how that is going to uh, translate to the desktop and as for the power consumption then Intel are using a slide uh, titled 15 watt single thread performance and they are of course showing the benefits of a 10th generation core ice lake processor against the uh, several of the older processors uh, obviously Skylake gets decimated which is a sixth core CPU and but a Whiskey Lake CPU doesn't do too bad. It's about 1.4 times, whereas uh, Ice Lake is um, hitting the 50% improvement compared to Skylake. Naturally, AMD are releasing Zen 2, and it is, at the moment anyway, facing off a very different usage scenario compared to Intel's Ice Lake. Ice Lake is a 15-ish watt power envelope processor which is designed for lightweight uh, net, uh, notebooks and that type of usage scenario. But obviously eventually Intel will be moving over to desktops. What we do know is that Comet Lake is still on a 14nm process. Uh, the release date for that CPU was the first quarter of next year. Although, and this isn't a source telling me this is just a pure guess on my part, I wouldn't be surprised if Intel just did everything they could possibly do to move that launch up so that it launches this year. And what we do know about that CPU is it's 10 cores. We don't know if there's any actual architectural differences. I have heard a couple of small changes here or there in terms of the uh, actual architecture. For example, the fact that it supports uh, B float. But, you know, whether there's any other changes, for example, much higher clock frequencies, we just don't know. There is supposedly additional pins on the socket which supply more energies to it. So, obviously, A, that, that can support, in theory, higher clock frequencies. But B, and its primary purpose is to be able to support more processor cores under full load. Uh, so, what we do know is that Comet Lake comes first and then supposedly... Uh, rocket Lake, but obviously plans can change and I wouldn't be surprised if this is worst case scenario. Hopefully Intel can uh, push out 10nm desktop processors based on the Sunny Cove architecture. The reason I'm so hopeful that they can is because it just puts AMD under a lot of pressure, which just means that of course they will push out CPUs at much higher frequencies. Uh, and one of the reasons that we're learning right now that AMD did not launch a 16 core processor um, or aren't launching a 16 core processor when Matisse finally debuts on July the 7th is because they don't feel they need to yet. They're holding that back. But imagine if 10nm CPUs from Intel were due in, let's say, I don't know, the third quarter of this year, just for example. Don't you think that AMD would be doing anything they could possibly do to just maintain the advantage? Oh, and finally, I do want to detail a couple of other small things concerning the Intel Core X lineup. During the conference, uh, Intel did not disclose as much information as what I hoped, but they did highlight a couple of key areas. So these new parts would be the third generation of Core X. So this means that they debuted back at uh, Computex 2017. Hmm, weird how the time flies, right? Anyway. So the 7,000 and 8,000, uh, sorry, the 7,000 and 9,000 series were very similar to one another because obviously they're still using the same process node, they're still using the Skylake architecture, and honestly, the 9,000 series did not exactly redefine performance. It was slightly higher clock frequencies, slightly better power, uh, uh, sorry, power draw, and slightly better thermals, but not really worth an upgrade by any stretch of the imagination. Intel, however, have said that the new core processors will feature support for faster memory and they will also have much higher clock frequencies as well. 
With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you have, like, share, comment and subscribe because it does help out the channel an absolute ton. I'd also like to thank everyone who has been emailing me tips uh, and just conversations on social media or email or what have you. It's really cool and it's amazing to talk to you all. And uh, yeah, it's super fun as well. With all of that said though, take care of yourselves. Have a great day. Bye for now.